Seriously, I'm delighted to be with you today to receive the report of the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities. And it comes at a time of reflection for me, a time to look back and see what we've done and how we did it. And I don't mind telling all of you how very proud I am of the work that you all have done and how proud I am that this administration has lived by the philosophy that when it comes to the arts and humanities, the nation is best when government intrudes the least. President Reagan once called the arts one of the most important forms of human expression. In this video podcast, we take a look at his influence on the arts, both in the White House and across the nation. When Ronald Reagan took office, many believed that the president and his administration were antagonistic to the arts. This was due to the work being done to cut the federal budget. Arts funding, along with the funding for all programs, was being scrutinized. But any opposition President Reagan had to government funding for the arts was rooted in a deeply held conviction that it is not the place, and should not be the place, for government officials to determine what is good art and what is bad art. He felt strongly that the path is a dangerous one for a democratic society to take. He believed that the determination of such things should be left to the men and women across our nation, which created a dilemma for his administration. If the government wasn't funding the arts, then who was? So President Reagan created a presidential task force on the arts and humanities to find ways in which to increase private support for these important aspects of our civilization. This committee, which was created by executive order in 1982, has been instrumental in expanding arts funding in this country, devising innovative methods of fundraising from private sector sources in tandem with federal and state resources. And in the process, you've revolutionized the way Americans think about the arts and humanities and have made American business understand that a literate and cultured America is a better America, and America better able to compete internationally. With this system in place, we do not have to fear American artists becoming the handmaidens of government power. Throughout his administration, President and Mrs. Reagan enjoyed many entertainers at the White House. From the Dance Theater of Harlem to a concert with the Beach Boys, the variety of entertainers was always eclectic. Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, the New York Philharmonic, Wayne Newton, the U.S. Marine Band, and the Twyla Tharp Dance Company are just a few of the performances that originated at the White House. One of the ways in which arts was celebrated was through the In Performance at the White House series, which airs on PBS, and which was originated by Jackie Kennedy. Mrs. Reagan continued the tradition of live events from the White House on a cultural stage, introducing the public to some of the musicians and other cultural events in the country. Mrs. Reagan, however, took it one step further and used her lifelong interest in the arts by using the White House as a showcase for talented young performers by inaugurating the PBS television series Young Artists in Performance at the White House. Each concert brought together the accomplished talents of master performers with artists of the new generation waiting to be recognized. President Reagan's appreciation of the arts delved deeper than just music and dance. It also included artists and sculptors, including the famous artist Norman Rockwell, whose portrait of Ronald Reagan now hangs on permanent display in the Reagan Library Museum galleries. I have always been a fan of Norman Rockwell's, and I can tell you, I was awestruck when he asked to do my portrait. He painted it in a suite in the Madison Hotel in Washington. He stood me near a window to get the lighting just right, engaged me in conversation, and now and then asked me to turn my head. I was walking on air when he gave me the finished work. At the time of their initial meeting in January 1968, Ronald Reagan was governor of California. Norman Rockwell brought along a photographer to capture Governor Reagan, and he also made several color sketches himself. Mr. Rockwell then returned to his Massachusetts studio to complete the portrait in oil. The final painting, titled What About Ronald Reagan, was included as an image in Look Magazine for their July 9, 1968 issue. The painting hung in the White House during the entire Reagan administration. It then graced the Reagan's California residence until Mrs. Reagan's passing, when it was given to the Reagan Foundation and put on display in the Reagan Library. Why do we as a free people honor the arts? The answer is both simple and profound. The arts and the humanities teach us who we are and what we can be. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this Inside the Reagan Library video. See you soon.